When the rockets are flying overhead and hulks are flushing you out of cover, sometimes you need to be able to fade into the shadows before striking back at the heart of the bot menace. Welcome to the SES Emperor of Democracy. My name is Commissar Kai, and today I'm going to show you all how to incorporate sabotage and stealth tactics for you and your team against the bots. I know, I know. I also yearn to face the enemy head on. But sometimes it's better to give the bots a knife in the back while your team punches them in the face. We'll be going over how to disengage from fights, pave the way for our team by taking out key objectives, and how to cover our squad with good stratagem use. Even if you're not doing a full stealth run, these tactics will help you take your bot game to the next level. Now that you know what the video is about, let's drop in and spill some oil. For this one, we're going to focus more on what we're doing rather than what weapons we're bringing to the fight. But I still want to walk y'all through the loadout real quick. Because we're going to want to keep a low profile and we'll be splitting off from our team regularly, we want to take weapons and stratagems that add utility rather than focusing too much on what's the most lethal. To that end, we'll be taking the Diligence Counter Sniper, Grenade Pistol, and Stun Grenades. The Diligence Counter Sniper is great at popping heads but it can also take out a Devastator with just six to seven shots to their belly or their legs. Additionally, this weapon is quiet. You can easily take out the little guy's garden bot outposts without alerting their freedom-hating friends to your presence. The grenade pistols for popping off quick shots, we need to stagger a Devastator to take out a Scout Shatter that's picked up our scent. And of course, we can use it to take out the occasional Fabricator. Stun grenades are a staple of my loadouts, but this time, instead of using them to set up kills on the bots, we'll be using them mostly to bail our teammates out of tight spots or to give us a few precious seconds to make a clean getaway. For stratagems, we'll be taking a potent mix of the spear, orbital smoke strike, eagle air strike, and the orbital laser. The spear works amazingly well with smoke being able to target enemies through it without letting the bots get a good beat on you. It also lets us help out our team from up to 300 meters away. And since we'll be splitting off quite a bit, this comes in real handy for sniping out the occasional Hulk chasing down one of our squad mates. Smoke weapons and stratagems are so underrated against the bots that it physically pains me. So I'm going to show y'all just how effective the orbital smoke strike can be in this one. Creating on-demand cover for getting out of tight spots or to slow down a horde of bots is just incredibly strong. If you've struggled with getting pinned down and shot to pieces, the orbital smoke strike might be the answer to your problem. Plus, it's got a real low cooldown at only 100 seconds. Per usual, Eagle One's going to have our back with her high explosive payload, so we can quickly take out a patrol or two when we need or two. Finally, we're taking the orbital laser. This stratagem is going to let us quickly take down bigger outposts, AA emplacements, or mortar pits so we can keep mobile. Try not to use it against big groups of enemies unless absolutely necessary, since we need its utility for objectives. Sometimes it's better to disengage from a big fight rather than use one of your three orbital lasers on it. If you like this loadout, like the video as well. That one click helps out a lot with my mission to spread cooperation, team play, and good tactics to the Helldiving community. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel for a new video every week. With that all out of the way, let's talk about how to use stealth tactics to take on the bots. First thing we're going to be looking at is when to roam. Far too often I see my fellow Helldivers sprint to the opposite side of the map, die, and then court-martial themselves straight out of the game. Instead of this reckless approach, we're only going to be splitting off from our team for one of two reasons. The first being we need to take out a high priority objective. This can be detector towers, mortar pits, heavy outposts, or worst of them all, stratagem jammers. Since we spotted this jammer earlier, we're splitting off from our team while they push the first primary. The second reason is if we need to clear a path that our team is likely to take, which will come up here in just a moment. But we take out the stratagem jammer from a different angle, and then we're going to push up a little bit, but y'all can probably see there's a bot drop flare right there in the distance. This means it's a great time for me to continue roaming. If I didn't see this, I might have gone back and grouped up with my team. But that bot drop being called in means that it's now on cooldown. So the next point that we're going to talk about is how to read your mini-map to make decisions once you've decided that it's a good time to roam. So here's the mini-map, this is what we're working with, and as you can see we got this big old heavy bot outpost right dead center in the middle of the map, and another bot outpost slightly to the left. We really want to take out these two without going further to the right of the map, that'll take us way too far away from our teammates. But if we take out those two outposts in the middle of the map, it's going to give our team so much breathing room for how they choose their engagements. Patrols are going to have to come in from different angles. We're just going to have more room to work with as we go about the map as a unit, even when I'm split off on my own. 
But as you can see, I tag out that detector tower, but I quickly make the decision that that is far, way too far away from my team for me to go for right now. I also noticed that my orbital laser didn't quite finish off that heavy outpost. I suspect it's because it got hung up on a hulk or two. But I've made the decision at this moment that I need to go regroup with my team because I'm just real low on ordnance, y'all. I need to call in that resupply, and I really don't like calling in resupplies when I'm completely away from my team. We were able to regroup up, and I noticed that my teammates are struggling. They're in the pit with a whole bunch of bots assaulting a heavy outpost. But I do see that there's a couple of cannon towers and a factory strider off in the distance. So I figure if I can take these two targets out, I should be able to push up to roughly where C4 is and then branch off again from my team to go take out the, uh, those two outposts I mentioned earlier. I still haven't dealt with them yet. So after providing some spear overwatch, I move in to into the thick of things, re, uh, reinforce C4, and I'm going to start looking for a chance to move out. I want to head towards that destroyed tower, but I notice that there's quite a few bots. There's a bunch of hulks, there's a few devastators, and all kinds of nastiness. So I need to kind of buckle down for a moment and fight my way out of this. I call in my extra spear just so I can reload up. But then, unfortunately, some bot bullcrap happens. And as I'm getting ready to throw out a stratagem, I get shot through the rock. I mean, this happens. It sucks when it does, but it happens to everybody. So I drop back in, and just to show my contempt a little bit, I land right on top of one of these fabricators before taking right back off to grab up my stuff and go about my original objective. I've bailed out my team, well not bailed out, I've helped my team through that tough situation, and now it's time for me to go back to my role. So this is another good time for me to roam. It also involves my third tip for sabotage and stealth tactics, and that's how to dump aggro. And for those of you not in the know, what that means is I don't want bots to be shooting at me, to put it in the simplest possible terms. And right now, I'm in a valley with, like, basically no cover. So the only way I'm going to be able to drop aggro off the bots is by, you know, taking them out. I have to take out these hulks, devastators that are following me. But as soon as I see an opening, I'm going to sprint away, and I'm going to keep ducking behind any line of sight breakers. That patrol will aggro onto me if I don't deal with it, so I throw out a stun grenade and eagle airstrike. It'll take out the whole patrol. Eagle one always does her job fantastically. But now, as you can see, I'm looking for some way to break line of sight with all of these bots that are spread out all over the place. I notice those rockets coming in. That's clearly not a good direction. So I'm taking off in the other direction. This is thankfully towards the outpost I wanted to destroy, that being one of them. So I took out a patrol. I threw an eagle at that outpost, which is going to clear up all the enemies that are there. And now the only things that really have attention on me, they don't, the only things that are aggroed on me is this heavy devastator. There's that one fake commissar over there. And now, as you can see, I'm not really being shot at anymore. There's a few pot shots coming in, but I keep ducking behind bits of cover. And I've pretty much lost the bots at this point. And I noticed this radar tower in the distance, so we're going to sprint our way towards it. Now, unfortunately, due to how the AI of the bots works and all of its inferiority to human technology, sometimes they're just going to shoot at you when it really feels like they shouldn't be able to. But as long as there's not big volleys of rockets coming at you, you're pretty safe to say that you've dumped the aggro. You are no longer being targeted by the majority of the bots. And the orbital smoke strike can also come in real clutch here. And I will admit, I did not use this stratagem to the ultimate effect. I've not been using it much, and I learned a lot through playing this game and watching this footage over. But basically, if you need to break aggro and you're in a big open area, just pop that stratagem, throw it right at your feet, and just keep running in a straight line. And that'll usually be enough to dump the aggro off of you. Now, C4 here is being a good teammate. He saw me off on my, on my lonesome, and he decided to go help me out. And even though I didn't ask for it, and even though it wasn't the point of this video, I still want to encourage that type of behavior. But let's take a quick second to look at the map again and see where how our game plan has evolved as we take out this heavy outpost. Now, imagine that that big, ugly red blob in the middle is already gone, because I'm just going to chunk another orbital laser at it. I'm going to fire off a spear shot at a hulk, so the same thing doesn't happen that happened before. And the orbital laser is going to take it out. So that one is dead. So looking at the map, it looks like D3 and E2 are going to be able to take out that primary objective just north of them. So my next big priority is that detector tower, because they're going to go to the next primary after they're done with that one. And even if they don't, I can clear out that detector tower and go straight to the last primary. Now that small red dot near the extraction point, we're not going to worry about that right now, because we can just take that out as we're heading towards extraction. So let's go make this detector tower feel incredibly inadequate by sneaking up right on it. 
So as y'all can see, it's got that kind of red beam that goes around. And if that beam spots you, you just saw it pass right over me, it'll call in bot drops even if there's already a bot drop going on. So I'll wait for that beam to pass me by. I go up a little bit closer and I notice for sure that it is not looking at me anymore. So I'm able to just run right up to it and I'm going to employ a trick I learned from another YouTuber named Postrook. But what you can do is you can dump a hell bomb right beneath it and this will still take it out. Now, C4, I admire the zeal. I really do. But if you see a teammate calling in a hell bomb, don't don't do this. Don't throw a 500 at it. You're you're wasting your stratagem and you're just kind of I don't know. It's not really helping. I know you the intention is to help, but especially when you miss on the first shot, I'm able to arm up the hell bomb. But he's going to throw out another 500, which is going to blow up my hellbomb. So I was a little salty about that. But like I said, we forgive our teammates. We don't get hung up on this type of stuff. That second 500 will take it out. And then he pings out that fabricator. So I know he wants to destroy it. I'll just take it out with a spear real quick. But now, as y'all saw in the mini map, the last primary is right behind me, y'all. So C4 and I will go make our way over to take that out before regrouping up with our team. Now, since this is only the second time I've played this mission, I do want to give y'all a few pointers about how to take these things out because they're real easy if you if you know what you're doing. So you see this like metal bridge that's going across the way? We need to go up that or circle around the back to get to it, but I know on the other end of that bridge is like three machine gun emplacements that have little bots on them. And so I prefer to just throw the eagle at it, not worry about that. And I know this because the very first time I did this mission, I got gunned the hell down as I was crossing this bridge. So we're up here, and as you can see, there's really no enemies. This is not typical, I don't think, but it's pretty easy to sneak your way on here, especially, you know, you take out the guards from distance with your diligence, or, you know, you just dump an eagle on them like I did. But we take this out without any problem, and I'm going to call in another hell bomb. And we're just going to watch as this thing blows up because this just fills me with so much democratic pride, y'all. Like, I know this miss mission is super basic, but, like, it's a really big gun that I know is shooting down my comrades in arms up in orbit. So, I take great pleasure in taking it out. With the hell bomb armed, there's only one thing to do. Get a good vantage point and salute the explosion because screw the bots and all their stupid inventions that should not exist. Last thing we got on our list of things to do is to corral our teammates and get towards extraction. So E2's been struggling over here for a bit because they took out the primary completely by themselves, which props to them for doing so. So I'm going to throw out the orbital smoke, give him some place to run towards. I'm going to collect up C4 samples. He just disconnected, y'all. I don't think he rage quit or nothing like that. But I've been pinging E2, like, you know, different destinations. I'm trying to communicate to him through pings that, like, I've got your back. I've got a smoke screen down. Let's get out of here and head towards extract. So this part, I'm going to show you all a little bit of the fight, but I really want to show you all what happens afterwards because it's going to go into our fourth and last point how to evade the bots, which honestly, maybe that should have been the first thing, but it was most relevant here at the end of the video and I didn't want to shoehorn it in. So let's talk about it. The first thing that comes to mind when it comes to evading the bots is you gotta lose your tail. If any bots that are quick, like Scout Striders or even like Hulk sometimes, if they're following you, you really want to take those out first. So now our rear is clear after I took out those two Hulks and E2 and I can push forward towards the extraction point. But we start to notice a lot of patrols. So I'm using this plant thing. I forget what these are called. We have them back where I'm from. But I stepped on it, give myself a little bit of cover, and now I'm just looking for any kind of Hulk or anything that I can take out easily. Because E2's got me covered with all the de anti-devastator stuff. I throw out my orbital laser because there's no big primary objectives to go, and I know that we need to clear out this group of enemies before we can move. So this all plays into that kind of evading thing. You can't really evade the bots when you're out in the open and they know where you are and there's just wave after wave of them coming, right? So I throw out the orbital laser, give us a little bit of breathing room, and I grab up my spare spear. And after taking that rocket in the back, I knew, okay, now we really got to leave. So I tell E2 that it's time to get out of here. Well, I, you know, ping it to him. And we're just going to start hauling butt towards the other side of the map because y'all saw big old bot drop came in with his factory strider. So I'm able to lose him a little bit, but E2, because he's not wearing scout armor, he gets spotted by this patrol, and they start shooting at me too, because they were looking at him, saw me. I think that's how it works anyway. But we're going to be going in a big old loop, because I don't know if y'all can see it, but up in them hills, there is a horde of bots. It's like three patrols, there's a factory, there's two factory striders, one on either side. If we push straight through that, even if I had like a kill everything loadout, it would be a grind, y'all. It would take forever. 
So I throw down another smoke strike to hopefully disengage that patrol from E2. And I'm trying to just ping him like, hey, we, we need to go this way. Because there's a lot of big pieces of cover, like these big rock outcroppings, the first primary objective they did. All this kind of cover is going to break that line of sight and let us dump the aggro from the bots. Now we're looking for an opportunity, and this is another part of evasion. You, you usually want to stay behind cover, stay hidden, until you see a chance to like sneak your way between a couple of patrols and basically just avoid fights that aren't necessary. But that rocket volley told me, oh no, they still know where we are. I don't really have a good way to get through that because my smoke's on cooldown. I see a hulk in the distance pathing that way. So E2's got the right idea. We're going to path the way up that primary. We looped all the way around, and now there's that patrol I saw earlier, Factor Strider on the left. So I'm going to crouch down. I'm hoping that E2 sees what I'm doing, and I'm pinging the direction I want him to go. Because I really don't want to fight this. We're in the complete open. But as soon as I know that I'm far enough away, I stop crouching and I start sprinting because I don't want another patrol to spawn behind me or something like that. But E2 and I were able to evade the enemy and regroup up with D3, who went and took out that last little outpost while we were making our way towards Extract. And we actually spent about eight minutes fighting here at Extract, and half of that time we all forgot that we hadn't called in the Extract. <laughs> But I do want to leave a little bit of this in. I'll just show you all the highlights because this really shows you that this kind of utility loadout, yeah, it's good at roaming, but it is also very effective in just a team fight. My teammates have all the heavy ordnance covered and we got another teammate that dropped in. But because I can keep dumping down these smoke screen, look at all those bots. They can't do nothing now. They can't shoot at me and I've got free reign to hit them with a the spear. The smoke screen's also gonna make them kind of like diddle daddle a little bit like they're not going to be moving as quick as they should so that orbital gatlin strike i'm sure is absolutely annihilating that bot drop and this is all because i dropped down that smoke screen if i didn't drop down the smoke screen we'd be getting shot they'd be moving forward a little bit faster and it'd just be harder y'all so like these utility stratagems i know the argument why take utility when you can take more ordnance but i really don't believe that guys like these types of utility strats utility grenades and by the way, of course I survive here. I'm Commissar Kai. Y'all know who I am. But these kind of utility abilities, they really do bring a lot to a team. And like, my smokescreen enabled that Orbital Gatlin Barrage to just wipe out like 20 bots. Now I'm going to give y'all a little bit of a bonus tip, and this is a little bit more specific to the spear, uh, but you can really apply it to any kind of support weapon. It had nothing to do with being a saboteur, but... If you can fight around a resupply with a support weapon like a recoilless rifle, spear, anything that's a little ammo hungry and can dump its ammo quickly, fighting around a resupply, it just gives you so much firepower, y'all. Like, instead of having four rockets, I've now got, what, 16? As long as I play it right and I use up all the uh, resupplies like a greedy little hell diver. But it's still a good thing to know and it's still a good thing to play around and like I'm not going to just go up and take them after firing off every spear. I'm going to wait till I've used some grenades, wait till I've used some stems. But my team's also doing the same thing. So you see like right here, I'm pretty much out of grenades. I need some spear ammo. I'll take a resupply. While we wait for this extraction fight to finish off, let's go over what we've learned. So we've gone over when to split off versus when to group. So you know, once you've decided that, hey, bot drop got called in, my teammates are doing all right, I can go take out that detector tower. That's what that first point is. The second is to use your mini map to, prior to like make a game plan. Like I've decided that those two central bot outposts were my main objective for the game. And so I played around that. You know, I did other things. I went and grouped up with my team. I fought some, but I always had in mind that that was what I wanted to accomplish to help my team as a roamer. Then we talked about dump and aggro, you know, how to lose the enemy once they've aggroed onto you. And you do that by ducking in and out of cover, you go through different like line of sight blocking, you can use your orbital smoke, and then you also want to make sure to take out any bots that are fast, like, you know, uh, what are they called, scout striders or, you know, the flamethrower variant of the Hulk. Those enemies can chase you down, and as long as they're chasing you, their, their friends will know where you are. So make sure you kill them first before moving on to, you know, lose them entirely. And the last point we went over was how to evade the enemy. I know that part was a bit brief, but it really comes down to just being aware of what's around you, where most of the enemy is concentrated, and finding a different route to approach so that you don't have to fight your way through an 
an absolute army of bots just to get on Pelican 1. Whether you're a hardcore stealth player or you're just dipping your toe into it by watching this video, I hope you all have learned something and see that this playstyle does have a place. You just can't be selfish, you still gotta play around your team, and you gotta have a game plan. If you do those three things, you're gonna be fine. Just don't be like those people that run off on their own, die, and then rage quit the game because they got embarrassed or something. And before any of you pro hell divers jump down my neck about what I just said, I do understand that if you're good enough at this game, you can go solo the map entirely by yourself. But A, I do not think that is an optimal way to play, and B, it is a lot less fun. I like working with random people, I like building those camaraderie moments, and I like making new friends. And if you just go play completely selfishly, that's going to be a lot harder to do. But anyway, y'all, thanks for tuning in, and until next time, this is Commissar Kai, signing out.